Good morning, friends. Happy Friday. I'm so glad that you are here with me on this Friday, September 1st. Can you believe it? We are into September. It's so wild to think about that <laughs> we have already been, at least my kids have already been in school for four weeks. I've actually been teaching for four weeks um, in my new job, part-time teaching journalism at the high school where my kids go. And here we are, September 1st. I would love to know how your August was. Drop a little emoji for me if you would like to share a little bit about your week or how your month of August was in a word or two. How would you describe this past month? I have to say for me, it feels like a whirlwind at this point. Um, just <laughs> can't believe that we are all the way through August. I feel like we were just starting school yesterday. Um, and I want to say good hello and good morning to some of my friends who I see here are live on Instagram. Um, a bunch of friends over here, Laverta and Josh. Good morning to you, Jeannie and Brett, Shilpa, Mama T. I'm so glad that you are here and God's will children ministry. Good morning to you. Um, yes, I was at a concert last night. Actually, I took my middle daughter to go see Phil Wickham and Brandon Lake, who were doing a worship concert here in Fresno, where we live. And we got to see We Are Messengers and hear some amazing preaching from um, Carlos Whitaker, Los Wit, here on Instagram. If you are watching on Instagram, you can go check out his stuff. He had an amazing message for us last night. And you know what? It was such a sweet time. We kind of decided at the last minute, um, just a few days ago, to to grab some tickets to this concert. And my daughter is actually a keyboard player. She helps with the worship team at school and loves to worship as much as her mama. And so we just had a fun mommy-daughter date. And when we got there, we actually went and grabbed sandwiches from Ike's um, just right across the street from the Save Mart Center and then we we headed over to the concert but we saw so many people that we know whether they're from church or friends from school or others um, it was kind of this fun reunion and the concert itself was amazing I did a little bit of a live broadcast last night so if you're on Instagram or um, my Facebook page you can go check out those reels um, you know, I didn't even realize how many of my favorite worship songs Phil Wickham and Brandon Lake have written, and it was such a joy to be able to worship with 7,000 people. So some people thought they were going to a concert. We were going to church, <laughs> and I think it was so beautiful, even in light of our psalm that we went through last week, Psalm 136, which was a Thanksgiving song that was really about worshiping God and just calling out to him all the things that we are thankful for, remembering his hesed, his steadfast life. It was so amazing. Um, I see my friend Josh here. He said he had a daddy-daughter date and that he really enjoyed it as well. And some of you just logged on and, and were listening live with me through Instagram. So it was a lot of fun. I'm going to go ahead and dive into Psalm 137 today. And I thought, oh, the irony, because the mood and the tone of this psalm is so vastly different. And yet, you know, it's one of those psalms where it's like, well, why is this in here? Because it does have such a, um, I don't know, such a tone of sadness and, and grief and even rage that we see in some of the words. And yet, I'm always encouraged when I sit back for a moment and reflect on some of the psalms like this one that do include that language that is full of emotion because it's a reminder that our God can handle all of it. And so if we are in that space that we can come to his feet, we can be reminded of Jesus and we can you know, share our hot mess. And so forgive me, I already started preaching because the message of Psalm 137 is so strong, but I'm going to read it and do what we normally do, which is walk through it verse by verse to try to understand this one especially has some context. And then I'll go ahead with my preaching, my takeaways for today, friends. Um, if you would like to read along, 
open your Bibles to Psalm 137 or listen in. I'm going to be reading from the ESV, the English Standard Version, and the title in my Bible says, How Shall We Sing the Lord's Song? How Shall We Sing? And as I mentioned, this tone for them of like, things are so dire, things are so dreadful, we can barely sing. Like, how can we sing? That's the tone of that question. So here we go. By the waters of Babylon, there we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. On the willows there, we hung up our lyres, for there our captors required of us songs, and our tormentors mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? If I forget, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its skill. Let my tongue stick to the roof of my mouth if I do not remember you. If I do not set Jerusalem above my highest joy, remember, O Lord, against the Edomites, the day of Jerusalem, how they said, lay it bare, lay it bare down to its foundations. O daughter of Babylon, doomed to be destroyed, blessed shall he be who repays you with what you have done to us. Blessed shall he be who takes your little ones and dashes them against the rock. That's the last verse. It's pretty amazing, actually, when you look at this psalm, because you see the depth of their grief, the depth of their sorrow, and even in that last line, um, a sentiment of vengeance because of what the people have endured. And so I want to back us up. I want to give us a little bit of context. And I'll be honest, when I first read this one this week without any context, I was like, oh, baby, this one's going to be hard <laughs> for us to talk about. But then I started digging into some of the commentaries and some of the context and just recognizing that everything that is written in God's word does have that cultural context, a historical context. And it's so important for us to know that and to learn about that as well. God's word alone can touch and mold our hearts. But when we also you know, study a little bit deeper and get to know some of those layers, there's even some deeper takeaways that we can uh, bring with us as we read his word. And so here's what I want to tell you about Psalm 137. First of all, this was written when the, when Israel was in exile in Babylon. So they estimate about 586 BC. So this is before Christ, almost, you know, more than 500 years, almost 600 years. And really no one was to blame for Israel being in exile except for Israel because they have been unfaithful to God. And so here they are, and it talks about here in verse one, it says, by the waters of Babylon, there we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. So this is actually a place, the rivers of Babylon, it's in Mesopotamia, it's between the Euphrates and the Tigris rivers. And so here they are kind of on the shore of the Euphrates River, and they're just remembering the past and they're in captivity. And it's interesting because the captors then, they are asking, they're calling for the Judeans to sing because they have heard so much about the songs of Zion. I'm going to go over here to the Message Bible um, just to give us a little bit of um, contrast and even maybe richer language than we see in the ESV, which the ESV is always my favorite translation to start with. Um, but Eugene Peterson does such a beautiful job. He says, alongside Babylon's rivers, we sat on the banks. We cried and cried, remembering the good old days in Zion. Alongside the quaking aspens, we stacked our unplayed harps. And that's where our captors demanded songs, sarcastic and mocking. They said, sing us a happy song, Zion. And so here we see that the Israelites are being called upon to sing in the midst of their devastation, in the midst of their exile. They're far from home. They're in a place where they don't belong. And I wonder, friends, can you relate to that? 
Have you ever been far from home? Have you ever been in the midst of a place where you were like, I do not belong here? Have you ever felt like you were in exile? That's the invitation for us today is to think about some of those times to maybe relate to what the Israelites are going through here. And so there's some powerful imagery that we see in verse four after they've been asked by their captors to sing, of all things, to sing while they're in captivity. And it says, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its skill. And so what they're saying here is in this powerful imagery, how can we sing? We are in the middle of this wasteland. We are in the middle of this grief, of this death, of this captivity. And so they're drawing this contrast that they don't want to forget Jerusalem, which has been entirely and violently destroyed by Babylon. And they are saying like, don't let me forget this. If I forget it, it's like I'm forgetting my skills that I know how to do that are secondhand. Um, Eugene Peterson describes it this way. He says, if I ever forget you, Jerusalem, let my fingers wither and fall off like leaves. Can you imagine this, friends? Let my tongue swell and turn black if I fail to remember you. If I fail, oh dear Jerusalem, to honor you as my greatest. And so we see that there's a longing for them to remember Jerusalem, which has been destroyed. There's a longing for them to remember the past, the glory days, the times when they had hope. And you know what? Here they are sitting by the river, being commanded to sing, and they're feeling pretty hopeless. And that's why I think it's so important that Psalm 137 is here in our Bible, friends, because I know that there are some of you listening today who are feeling hopeless. I know that there are some of you listening today, like myself, who can recall a time when you felt hopeless. So let's go ahead and and lean into these next words. It says, God, remember those Edomites and remember the ruin of Jerusalem. That day they yelled out, wreck it, smash it to bits. And you Babylonians, ravagers, a reward to whoever gets back at you for all you have done to us. That's the message version. And then it says, yes, a reward to the one who grabs your babies and smashes their heads on the rocks. This is the state of desperation of Israel. They are destroyed. They are in exile. They have been captives for a while and they're being commanded to sing and they don't even know how to sing. They're in this place where they don't belong. And just a little context here in verses seven through nine, it's that they're calling for God to remember the Edomites. Now, do you want to know who the Edomites are? The Edomites actually were the descendants of Esau. And so this is Jacob's twin brother. So it's the twin brother of Israel, the Edomites. And so here in Psalm 137, verses 7 through 9, they are calling for the destruction of the Edomites. First of all, let's think about the fact that that is calling for the destruction of their twin brother, their family member, and the future generations, which is exemplified in the idea of these babies being killed. But then let's take into the second layer, the context that the Edomites were their enemies. They destroyed Jerusalem and they're to represent all those who are enemies of Israel. And so here is a plea to God for the destruction of their enemies. And really at the heart of it is a plea for justice. Have you ever been in that point? Have you ever been at rock bottom where you were just crying out to God that your enemies would suffer, that the person who was against you would suffer, that in your heart of hearts that you felt that? Friends, I know we've been there. And I know this is a difficult psalm for us to digest for that reason. But I just want us to remember that even here, God can handle our emotions, our honesty. And so it's interesting because this psalm is a psalm about not singing songs 
and yet it's a song. And so there's some irony there um, that I recognize as I was reading and listening to some commentaries last night that when it feels wrong to sing because things are so awful, when you are in that place of being rock bottom, that is absolutely the time when you should sing. And so last night as I was at that worship conference, with my daughter and we were listening to the words of Phil Wickham and Brandon Lake and even this quirky Irish band, We Are Messengers. I was reminded even by the little tidbits of testimonies that these men were sharing about their own lives that it is in that place of grief, it is in that place of suffering, it is in that place of exile that we should sing and that when we worship, it changes the atmosphere. And so even though the tone of Psalm 137 feels so different from the Psalm 136 that we looked at last week that was all about worship and thanksgiving and thanking God for his steadfast love, you know what? The message is the same. The message is the same in both Psalm 136 and Psalm 137. That message is an invitation for us to worship God no matter how we're feeling, no matter what trials we're facing, no matter what we are going through. And so friends, that is my takeaway for you today before we go into a time of prayer. And I wanna invite you to go ahead and share your prayer requests in the comments if you're here with me live, or even if you're watching this later as a video over on YouTube or a replay on Instagram or Facebook, feel free to share your prayer requests. Think about, do you feel like you're in exile right now? And I wanna give you this takeaway. We face all kinds of exiles, places where we have given up on joy. But even there, even there, we are invited to worship. And when we worship God, when we are in the toughest of places, where we are in the saddest of moments, where we are feeling sick and downtrodden, Friends, that's the place where we find hope. And so this morning, I want to even stand testimony to that because I can recall in my life, and especially in this last decade since my husband went to heaven, it was almost nine years ago, um, September 9th actually, there have been moments where I have felt rock bottom. There have been moments where I've been in the depths of grief and it is singing, it is worship that has pulled me out. It has been like God's hand grabbing my shirt and saying, you are mine. And when you worship, hope will rise. That's my takeaway for you today, friends. I'm going to go ahead and move into a time of prayer. And I know that this is a difficult psalm, but maybe some of you can relate to the tone, to the sentiment, to the feeling of desperation, even the, the crying out in rage of God, where is your justice? Where is your justice and righteousness? Let it prevail. I'm sure that we've all been in that place in moments. And so I want to pray for us this morning. I want to invite you to share your prayer requests in the comments. And um, as we pray, let's be thinking about these words and this takeaway. Father God, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for the friends who have joined me. And I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not an accident that you had them click so that they could listen to this morning's broadcast as I am walking through Psalm 137. And God, even though this Psalm feels almost horrific to read, I thank you that this Psalm is here in your word. I thank you that these words of emotion come through for us today on September 1st, 2023, because I believe that there is someone who is listening who needs the words of Psalm 137. And so, dear Lord, I pray that if anybody feels like they are sitting by the waters of Babylon, if they feel like they are in exile, if they feel like they are in a place where they do not belong, if they are weeping, God, if they are filled with the heaviness of grief, God, that you would hear their prayers, that you would hear our prayers this morning. I pray, God, that you would help us in this place. Help us to hear that invitation to sing. 
And I know that sometimes we can be in that place where it doesn't feel like we should be rejoicing. But even there, we can sing. So God, give us the courage to sing in the midst of the waiting, in the midst of the trials this morning. I want to pray along with um, some of my friends here who are live on Instagram, who are sharing some prayer requests. I want to pray for my friend Shilpa. And she's asking me to pray that in the time of suffering, she will remember to sing to the Lord. And so God, I specifically pray that over my friend Shilpa, one of our regulars around here who is listening to walking through his word, who is leaning into your word, God, with us. And so I pray for my sister that whatever she is going through right now, and I don't pretend to know the details, but you know every single one. You know every detail, every emotion, every thought that Shilpa is having right now, God. And I pray. I pray that you would meet her. I pray that she would be brave to sing. And in the midst of her worship and coming back to your feet, I pray, God, that she would be lifted that she would be lifted up, that her soul would be lifted and her eyes would come back to lock eyes with you. God, I pray that for any of my friends who might be listening this morning. Josh here, who's saying, I feel elevated when I elevate his name. I love how he worded that. And so God, we elevate your name today. We cry out that you are Father God, that you are sovereign, that you are omnipotent, that you are omniscient. We know that you are a God of hesed, as we read last week in Psalm 137, that you are a God of steadfast love, that you are the only one who does not betray us, Lord. God, we thank you for that. We thank you that you see us in that place of suffering that you know injustice. And we thank you for sending your son, Jesus, because we know that this is the answer to the injustice in the world, in history, in the present, and in the future. Thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross, to suffer in our places, God, because we too, we too are the enemy. We too have sinned. We too fall short every single day. And so I am deeply grateful for the work of your son, Jesus, on the cross, that he died and he rose again so that every single one of us can get to be in the new Jerusalem with you, Lord, that Jerusalem, as it says in your word, will be rebuilt, that we will get to enjoy singing again, that we will enjoy victory. And it's for everyone who believes that we are your people. And so God, I sit here this morning on September 1st, 2023 with my friends and we sing in concert and we say, thank you, Lord. We say, thank you, Lord, for meeting us in the middle of our messes, in the middle of our deep grief, in the places where we have given up joy. I say, thank you, God. Would you infuse us with a sense of your hope, with a sense of your hope that is rising as we sing. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, friends, thanks for being with me today. I've got to be honest with you. I read this one and I was like, oh man, I don't want to teach this one. It's hard. The language is hard. But I know that there are some of you who are listening today who needed this message that even in the midst of suffering, when you feel hopeless, that when we worship, it changes the atmosphere. And I wanted to share with you a couple of different resources. You know I love sharing resources. Um, One of the things I would like to share with you is that I would love to have a little bit more personal connection with you. And every week I put out a letter, really, to my readers. It's called my Glorygram. And I love to trace God's glory, whether that's through grief or through victory, or through little glimpses that I see in my week. And so I write about that every week. And I would love to gently deliver that to your inbox. So if you would hop over to DarinaGilmore.com, sign up for my Glorygram if you are not already a part of it. If you get my Glorygram, would you drop an emoji in the comments right now? I want to see who are the people who are already part of my Glorygram tribe. I love being able to connect with people weekly. And I also have a paid subscription 
that is, a, there's a free option for anybody and there's a paid subscription where you get some bonus things, which is really exciting, something that I just rolled out recently. I also love to share resources. So every week I share five different resources that are things that I'm doing, things that I've developed, things that other people have developed who are inspiring to me and to my family. And here's one of the ones that I wanna feature this week just for free, here for you. Um, the book is not free, but the, the, <laughs> the recommendation is free. So this is a new book that just came out. It's called Break Up With What Broke You. And I got a review copy of this book, How God Redeems and Re Rewrites Your Story. It's by Christian Bevere. You know, I felt like this was a really good one for me to share about today in light of Psalm 137. And so let me share a little bit about this book. It says breakups are typically synonymous with Rocky Road ice cream, rom-com reruns, and rough crying sessions, but not this one. This is an invitation to liberation, a chance to release who you've been and discover who you truly are. Often our former mistakes and regrets hold us back from where we're called to be. How can one heal and move on? To find your breakthrough, you must break up with what broke you. I love uh, Christian Bevere's kind of play on words there, and she shows us how to leave behind what's holding us back. And I think this is a really powerful book that is coming out here by Ravel, and so you might want to check that one out if you are in that raw place today. Um, she has some good words of encouragement for you. You can leave your less for more. You can silence shame's lies. You can restore your original design. And that's what the book is about. So friends, thank you for joining me today. Thanks for wading through Psalm 137 with me. Thank you for being Glorygram subscribers. I see so many of you who are dropping your emojis here. And I'm looking forward to sharing with you a new Glorygram, which will go out tomorrow, Saturday. I work on writing it on Fridays, and then I get to send it out to you on Saturdays. And I have a little... And I've got some really exciting news that is coming just around the corner. So I want you to be signed up for that glory gram so you can be the first to know. I have something that I've been working on for a while that I'm going to be revealing through my glory gram. And those are the, the folks who get to hear the news first. Friends, thank you for being with me today. Um, as always, feel free to DM me if you've got personal prayer requests. I pray over every single one of those. And I am honored that you would spend this 30 minutes with me. Thanks for being here today.